Ellis and the Elephant. Ellison was an elephant, a little elephant, and young. He was a young and little elephant, but not a baby elephant. His friends and his sister Edna could all make their trumpet blasts like other elephants, but not Ellison. He tried and he tried, but all he got was a little toot. See? cried Ellison. I don't even sound like an elephant. Ellison, I love your sound. His mother insisted. It sounds like you. Well, I don't want to sound like me. Ellison answered. I want to make a trumpet sound like everyone else. Ellison's mom got very close and touched him gently with the tip of her trunk. Ellison, you are not an ordinary elephant. No, sir, you are extraordinary. Even your name is unusual. All the greatest elephants in history were unusual. That's what made them great. But they tease me, Mom. Oh, now, Ellison, one day they'll all want to be like you. In the meantime, you're an elephant. You need to have a thick skin. With this, she gave him a motherly squeeze. Together, they walked down to the watering hole, trunk in trunk, where all the other elephants were bathing. Ellison liked it when Mom washed his back, but when she sprayed under his chin, the ticklish Ellison giggled and squirmed. <laughs> he watched as the others played their noisy games. I'm gonna get you! <laughs> they squealed and blasted, honked and blared. Not wanting to be called Smellison or Tootie again, Ellison made his way up the bank and behind a small clump of trees where he could be alone with his imagination. There he tried and tried to make that wonderful grand call that came so easily to everyone else. He filled his cheeks with breath and he threw his big ears forward but all he got was a little toot. Full of despair, Ellison stomped and stormed until he stumbled right over a bush. That did it. He kicked that little bush and pulled it from the ground and shook it with his trunk. And that was when that bush yelled at Ellison. What do you think you're doing? Leave me alone, you, you elephant! This is unusual, thought Ellison. I've been yelled at by all kinds of animals, but never by a bush. I'm sorry, little bush, Ellison apologized. Are you okay? Then out of this bush dropped that pesky weasel. Don't let it happen again, Smellison, he yelled, and he waddled away. Ellison followed him around the corner, over the hill, and into a valley, talking as he went. Hey, wait up, weasel. You can't talk to me like that. I'm bigger than you, and I apologized. And I didn't know you were in there in the first place. And you can't make me feel any worse anyway, because I can't even make a trumpet sound like an elephant. All I can make is a stupid little toot. Weasel stopped in his tracks and turned around to look up at Ellison. Okay, do it. Do what? Ellison asked. You sound. Weasel answered. Stop whining about it and let's hear it. Fine. Ellison agreed, and he blew a sad little sound. Ah. Weasel shook his head. Yep, that's terrible. I'd be mad too. And he disappeared into a hole in the ground. 
Ellison was not afraid of that little weasel. He walked right up, stuck his trunk down the hole, and blew one very crisp, clear sound that echoed underground. What followed was a long silence, during which Ellison was a little afraid. He wondered if he should have just let Weasel be this time. But then, Weasel popped out of the hole with dirt on his fur and a smile all over his face. Now that I like, he said, shaking the dirt off. Do it again. You're making fun of me, replied Allison. No, I'm not, Weasel insisted. What else can you do? I don't know, admitted Allison. Can you hold it longer? Ellison tried. And he could. And can you change the pitch? And he did. And can you make a lot of quick notes? Like, yeah, that, 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 that. And he did! Wow! Yelped Weasel. This is great! Okay, okay, now, close your eyes and look inside. When you find your voice, let it out. Ellison had no idea what a voice should look like. But he closed his eyes and looked inside. And looked, and looked, until he found it. It looked like nothing he'd seen before, but he knew it right away. It was his very own voice. Ellison's legs felt stronger, and his heart grew bigger. He took in a deep breath, and started with a long note that went on and on and on until all of the ears on all of the elephants in the watering hole turned to listen. They set out at once in search of that most extraordinary sound. (laughs) That's right, Allison! Hollered Weasel, jumping up and down. Don't stop now! You've got it! (laughs) And Allison did not stop. He made every sound that came from inside, and it formed a tune that made him dance. When the other elephants spied him from atop the hill, they saw and heard what they'd never before seen or heard. They stood and they watched with their mouths hanging open. And before they knew it, all of their trunks were swinging in time to the rhythm of Ellison's jazzy music. When he came to the end of his brand new tune, Ellison opened his eyes and saw and heard the whole herd. They rushed downhill to see the elephant who invented music. Leading the pack was Ellison's mom, beaming from one big ear to the other. How'd you do it, Ellison? I'd heard, Mom, from Weasel. Weasel? Asked Mom. Your imaginary friend? Yeah, he helped me find my voice. And it's really unusual. 
Edna, Eleanor, and Eli crowded in next to Allison, begging. Teach us! Teach, Teach us! us! Please! Everyone wanted to be as unusual as Allison. All of the elephants, and some of the other animals too, danced and sang and kept rhythm while Ellison played his jazz trunk. When the sun went down, the lightning bugs lit up the darkness. All night long, animals came from everywhere to hear the unusual elephant with the extraordinary sound. 